When I was younger, there was a story that went around in our family about how we should never call our aunt's name because the more we called her name, the sooner she would find my grandma and grandpa. This story is set back in Thailand or Laos, I'm not too sure, but we had this aunt who my grandpa and my grandpa were not very fond of, even though it was their own child. I believe she was the third child to be born in the family. I was told that this aunt was beautiful and charming, but my grandma would always beat her up whenever she was angry and make her do chores, kind of like Cinderella, except that this was her own child that she gave birth to. Well, this aunt of mine fell in love with a guy who also deeply loved her, but he and his family at the time got accepted to come to America, so he loved her, but promised that he will come back for her when he had the money and will send her money in pictures. My grandma never liked the fact that she was in love, so she always lied and hid stuff from her. One day, my aunt's boyfriend sent some money, pictures, and a letter to her, but my grandma decided to hide the letter in the picture and kept the money to herself. When my aunt asked her about it, she lied and told her that her boyfriend had gotten married. My aunt became hysterical and said that my grandma was lying. They got into a huge argument and my grandma had slapped her really hard on the face. My aunt was so upset that she left. No one knew where she went or why she didn't come home. Some time had passed and they found her dead. A lot of the cousins said that she took her own life by consuming some pills. Some said that she was so sad that a ghost came for her. Others stated that she died depressed, but nonetheless she died an angry ghost. During that time, we had an aunt who married into our family. Her name is Auntie Ying. Auntie Ying said that when she just married our family, my grandma, instead of making new clothes for her, just gave her my dead aunt's clothes instead. At the time, she didn't even know, but she started to experience strange things after she had received the clothes. There were times when garments would go missing, or things would be in places that they weren't before. One night, she and my uncle were sleeping. Back in those days, houses were one singular room and they didn't have separate rooms for bedrooms. Instead, they hung up curtains all around the bed to get privacy. This was when my Auntie Yang said that she heard someone open the door. She thought it was my grandma, but realized that the fire wasn't on. So she woke up and peeked a little bit, but saw that no one was there. My Auntie Yang decided to go back to sleep. Suddenly, she was woken up from a noise as if something was moving. So she peeked up on the side and saw the basket of my aunt's clothes moving towards the door and she could hear heavy breathing as if someone was angry with her. My aunt jumped up and said, Look, I did not take your clothes. Your mother gave it to me. She then heard a scream and the clothes disappeared. The morning after that, my auntie Yang was so furious, she went to my grandma and told her that her daughter had come to visit last night and took her clothes. My grandma just started talking her smack and said that my auntie Yang was delusional. That night, everyone went to sleep except for my grandma because she was still fixing up her dishes and cleaning. She then went to bed and heard someone open the door. When she looked over, she saw someone standing there, so she called out and said, who is it? Is it you, Ying? But that person didn't answer. This was when she heard heavy breathing, as if someone was angry, just like my Auntie Ying had heard. And then she heard a voice saying, Where is my picture? My grandpa began to get the chills, so she once asked again, Who? Who's there? Who are you? The voice got louder. Where is my letter? My grandpa took a step forward to see who it was, but then the wind started to blow really hard all of a sudden, and the pictures and letters of my aunt's boyfriend started to fly everywhere. 
When my grandma looked, it was her daughter who had died. The print of her hand from when she slapped her was still on her face. My grandma was so scared she said for her to leave them alone. Then the wind stopped and the pictures and letters were gone. The next morning, my grandparents, uncles, and auntie Ying all moved into another village and left their belongings because they didn't want my aunt to follow them. A few months after that, some people from their own village were on the move to a different village and had passed through my grandparents' village. The people who were moving had said that they had moved away because every night they would hear a girl crying and she would come knock on people's doors asking where her family had gone. People were too afraid to stay, so they started to move out of the village. My grandparents seeked the assistance of a shaman, and they found out that every time they would utter my aunt's name, she would find her way to the family again for revenge. That's a sad story. To be honest, the grandma and grandpa kind of deserves it. But the aunt, the aunt Ying that got the clothes, man, I'd be pissed too if, you know, my in-laws gave me some clothes that belong to a dead person. That's messed up. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to moanchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. Back in the days when I was in Laos, I heard that if you ever see or hear something strange, just keep on moving forward and pretend that you didn't see or notice them. During this time in Laos, I had some hearing loss. Not totally, but enough to where I need to face you directly to be able to understand what you're saying. When I was about 13 or 14 years old, I went out with my older cousin during the evening to check out some girls in the next village. On our way to the village, my cousin told me to follow behind him, and so I did. He said that if you see me run, run. If you see me crouch, crouch. If you see me hiding, you also hide with me. I agreed. I asked him why I must do the things that he requested. He said that the road that we are traveling on is haunted, so we must move quickly. If he sees or hears anything, we must detour immediately. I was scared, but I told him I wanted to go, so he and I went on this adventure. As we went on to this village towards the east, there was no problem. We met two nice girls who were just about to prepare dinner. They invited us to have dinner with their family, but we declined. We asked if it was okay for us to come and see them later. They agreed to come out and talk with us. I was happy, but my handicap was so shameful since I wasn't able to communicate well with the girls. I let my cousin do all the talking and laughed when he laughed. It felt awkward being there and not being able to say a single thing. One of the girls asked my cousin why I was not talking. He said that when I was young, I was stung by a wasp in the ear. The girl felt so sorry for me, she came and sat next to me. But I was shy since this was my first time a girl had ever noticed me at all. That's actually really cute. I tried to gather up some courage and carry a conversation with her. But everything that came out was yes and no, and mostly head nodding. She did most of the talking for the both of us. Oh, Hmong drama right here. Cue in the K-drama music. By the time I knew it, it had gotten very late. My cousin was still talking to the other girl while I was sitting next to the girl that I liked very much. I finally got enough courage to tell her my name and I asked her for her name and if it was okay for me to see her again. She smiled and said yes. I asked her if my handicap made her think differently of me. She said, it's my heart that she wanted, not my ears. I was so happy. It was getting close to morning at about 4 a.m. and the roosters were beginning to crow. We said our goodbyes. On our way back, I was following my cousin closely. All of a sudden, he started to run, so I ran after him. 
Every turn he made, I followed exactly how he told me to. We came to a crossroad, and there was a lady, dressed in black, standing there in the middle of the road, looking southward. My cousin stopped, and we hid behind a big tree. He put his hand to my mouth and whispered to me not to move or make any sounds. The two of us watched through the leaves, and the lady started to walk towards our direction. My cousin made sign language for us to hide underneath the leaves and let her pass. I could feel my heart pounding and the hair on my arms and neck rising. As we laid underneath the leaves, we could see her pass by. I could barely see a face, but I knew that she wasn't human. The both of us just laid down quietly and watched her go down the road. Instead of going back on the road, we detoured through the woods and found a different path home. My cousin and I were scared. My cousin said, Did you hear her calling your name? I replied with no. I thought that he was joking, but he looked serious. He said, Did you tell those girls your name? That's when I shook my head and said yes. He then said, Never ask for a girl's name or tell her your name out in the open. I was young and stupid. I didn't know what I was doing, and no one taught me this at all. When we got home, he told my dad that we saw a spirit calling my name on the road. My dad went and fetched a shaman right away. The shaman said that we need to change my name or else the spirit would find me. Then I would get sick. So right there and then, the shaman made a doll out of straws and tied my shirt onto the doll and said the person you seek is no longer here, so to stop bothering us. The shaman and my father took the doll to a cliff and threw it off the cliff. Later that week, I heard that the girl I was talking to got really sick and passed away. Even though my name was changed, I kept on seeing that girl in my dreams. Sometimes the dreams seemed so real like she was right here with me. In my dreams, I knew I was only dreaming, so I asked her to stop coming to see me. But she said she wanted me, and only me. I told her I was too young and still irresponsible, but she said that she loved me so much and that she'd always be with me. In my dreams, she was so beautiful and wonderful, but I knew that she was dead, so I tried my best to persuade her to leave me alone. She would cry, and it made me sad to see her cry. Once during the harvesting time, I was tired, so I went to sleep at our farm hut. I could have sworn I saw her vividly in our garden. I got up and scanned the rice field, but it was only my imagination. I was kind of scared, but I had to be strong and pretended to not notice what happened. I continued gathering the rice into my piles. My dad said for us to go home. He then came up to me and asked, Are you alright? I nodded and said yes. He said that I looked pale. That's when he asked if something had happened to me today. I then told him that since the last time the shaman came to our house, a week after, I started to have dreams of my dead girlfriend. And earlier, that's when I saw her in our rice field. My dad got his mung knife and raised it over my head and said, Leave my son alone. You are now in the land of the dead. My son is alive, so please leave him alone. I don't want to harm you, so show us some respect. If you truly love my son, then leave him alone. When we got home, my dad went to fetch the shaman again. We went to the village where the girl was living. When we arrived at her house, it was abandoned. We gave our condolences and killed a pig as an offering to her. Her family no longer lived in that village. After she died, they moved to another town to be closer to her dad's relatives. Ever since we did the offering, she never came to see me again. In 1986, we came to the US. I am no longer deaf. It turns out that I had a bad ear infection and with a cochlear hearing implant, I'm doing great. I always wondered what if I had heard that woman calling my name that night. Would I have died like that girl? 
I guess having a hearing loss was a blessing in disguise. Someone, please turn this into a moon movie. I swear to God, I'll pay you so much money for this. Back in Laos, there lived a family who were not productive at all. The kids were disrespectful and the parents were lazy. They never tended to their farm and the parents smoked opium all day. The kids, a son and daughter, were rude to their parents and would always go out and never come home. One day, the dad passed away. The mom was sad, but the kids really didn't care. They gave him a proper burial and went back to their ways. A few years passed and the mom became sick and eventually gave up on life. The son and daughter were poor and could not give her a proper burial nor a shaman ritual. Instead, they dressed her in her traditional Hmong clothes and left her dead corpse laying on the wooden bed that they had at the farm. The children came home after leaving her body and were looking for food to eat. Because they were lazy and never did much, there really wasn't anything to eat. Nighttime came around and the two of them went to bed. During the night, they heard scratching from the door. Scared, the sister asked the older brother to go and check it out, but he too was too afraid. The scratching kept on continuing until the early hours of the morning. The two siblings could not sleep at all that night. They did not know what was scratching at the door. Growing tired of all the noise, the brother finally got up and lit a candle. The two of them sat upon their bed and stared at the door. From the door, they heard a voice calling out, I'm home. Let me in. I'm hungry. Right away, the two siblings knew that it was their mom. They were so terrified, they held each other the entire night and cried their eyes out. Then again, the scratching continued. And again, the voice kept on saying, I'm home. Let me in. I'm hungry. The children did not respond, so the dead mother became desperate. She stuck her hand under the door. Her hands were all shriveled up and her nails were black. Her fingers were stuck together, one finger on top of the other. The mother started to dig the dirt under the door, trying to get in. All the while, she kept on saying, Hmm, I wonder if anybody is home. Let me go inside and make some food. I am so hungry. Then, the scratching stopped. The dead mother started running around the house. She laughed and screamed, Let me in! Let me in! Let me in! The children were frozen in fear. Then it got quiet. Not a single noise from outside. All of a sudden, the voice was right next to the wall outside of their bed. I know you are here! The daughter let out a shriek. Then it was all quiet again. A few minutes later, there was a sudden scratching at the door again. I will eat you kids up when I get inside. Dig, dig, dig. All throughout the night, she tried to dig her way in. Even with her attempt at digging the earth underneath the door, the dead mother could not get in. Desperate for flesh, she started to lick the door. The children were so terrified as they looked upon the door. This was when they saw a long red slimy tongue come from under the doorway. The tongue was so long it licked the door and started to extend to the pots and pans searching for food. All the while, her hand was still digging the earth. So hungry. So hungry. As the dead mother's tongue licked at the pots and pans searching for food, she said, Why won't you let me in? Open the door and cook me 
some food. The brother and sister were so terrified they sat frozen in fear. The mother went all throughout the night, licking and scratching, looking for something to fill her stomach. Just when the sun hit the horizon, the mother decided to leave. At the sign of her leaving, the children waited for a few hours before they ran out of the house to a neighbor's house. They told the neighbors what happened and went back to the farm to give their mom a proper burial. Upon arriving at the farm, they noticed that the mother's body was gone. To this day, they haven't got a single clue of what had happened to the body. The brother and sister moved away to another village and were never heard from ever again. This is also what I'm like when I don't get something to eat, so I understand why the mom's like that. Anyways, thank you for listening. Please leave a like and subscribe.